Hello everyone, my name is Tara Burushaki. I'm a fourth year PhD student at MIT, and today I'm going to talk about XAR, which is joint work with Macy, Laura, Aline, and Fado. Augmented reality is amazing. It changes the way we interact with the, with the physical world around us. When I'm talking about augmented reality, I'm referring to headsets such as, uh, such as, such as HoloLens from Microsoft that has a glass and they augment the way we see the environment by projecting uh, holograms on them. These have a lot of application, for example, in manufacturing and warehousing. However, these systems are limited. They can only see using their cameras and augment our reality based on these cameras. And we can see exactly the same thing with our own human eyes. So today, I'm going to talk about an augmented reality headset that can give you an x-ray vision. Of course, we are not going to use the actual x-rays, but we are building on top of the work that we have done in this community over the past decade on localizing and sensing using radio frequency signals. XAR is an augmented reality headset that can locate objects in the environment even when they're completely hidden from our view, project a hologram where they are, and help us interact with them. In order to do this, we are using batteryless recent radio frequency UHF RFID tags, such as this one. You might not know, but RFIDs are the most prevalent networking device on the planet. There are more than 30 billion of them. In fact, you might be wearing one on yourself, or even more. They might be woven into your clothes or in your bags. We are using exactly the same tags. The headset sends a wireless signal in the environment, and the RFID tags are hidden inside boxes on other objects. These tags power up and then respond back with their unique identifier to the headset, and then we are able to locate them using this response. This has a lot of application. For example, in a warehouse, a lot of objects and bins are tagged with an RFID. This can help fulfillment of customers' order by helping them find them and guiding them toward them. If you go into a retail store today, every single item is tagged with an RFID. This can help store associates to pack customers' order. It has also a lot of other applications in manufacturing and logistics. Today, I'm going to talk about XAR, which is the first augmented reality headset that has a non-line of sight perception. It introduces novel techniques that bridges network wireless sensing with augmented reality for sensing and localization. And is able to locate items with 9.8 centimeter accuracy in the line of sight and in com completely occluded settings. So how does this system work? When we were thinking about building this, we were really inspired by the past work in our community. So the first thing you need is an antenna for RF sensing. So this is how an RFID reader, a typical one, looks like. And this is how it's compared to the size of a HoloLens or an augmented reality headset. If I try to put it on the HoloLens, it looks very bulky and it's very heavy. So it's really difficult to enable this and uh, wear it as a, a very this RFID tag on your headset. So you might be thinking, why don't you use uh, like periodic antennas? We tried it and this is actually how it looks. It's an interesting prototype, but if you want to have a meaningful system, you can now really walk like this in a warehouse. It's really hard to move in the environment with these antennas. So because none of these, uh, of these off-the-shelf antennas work for our application, we said, OK, we need to make our own antenna. So to make such an antenna, we need to fit, uh, have some criteria and ma match these criteria. For example, it needs to be wide bandwidth so that we can locate our 5D tags in the environment accurately. It needs to be lightweight and flexible so that we can easily mount it on a headset. And it needs to match the visor shape so that it doesn't block cameras and sensors. For example, here you can see the cameras on the whole lens headset, and we definitely should not cover any of these. So we started with a single loop standard antenna, as you can see here, 
we built it on a capstone, uh, captain substrate. So it's lightweight and conformal, great. It does not block any of the sensors, great. Now let me tell you about its bandwidth. So here on the x-axis, you can see the frequency, and the y-axis, you can see the gain of the antenna. And this is how the uh, frequency response of the antenna looks like. It gives us around 100 megahertz of bandwidth. This is not enough to locate any RFID tag in the environment. So, as many of you know, when you want to design an antenna, it's a very iterative process. You simulate an antenna, you see its response, you simulate it again, change its shape, simulate it again until you reach the look that you need. So we did the same thing and we ended up with this look. You can see we are using some slots and tapering in order to increase its bandwidth. And this is its frequency response in the environment, which is giving us around 200 megahertz of bandwidth, which is good for our 5D localization. So you might be thinking, now that we have the antenna, how are we locating our 5D tags? One standard approach is synthetic aperture radars, or SAR. So in this approach, there is a RFID tag, the target, and an antenna. It takes a measurement, and it moves in the environment while taking the measurement. After it takes, for example, the first measurement, it creates a 2D map of where the RFID tag is in the environment. For example, here the blue means that there is a low probability that the RFID tag is there, and the yellow means there is a high probability that the tag is there. And then as the antenna moves in the environment and keeps taking measurements, it updates its probability map of the environment. You can see that actually as it takes more measurements, it, it gets more and more centered about the actual location of the tag. In order to uh, do synthetic aperture radar, we use this as standard formulation of SAR, but in the interest of time, I won't go into its detail. Past work in the community has used this technique for example, put uh, RFID readers on a Roomba or lock periodic antennas on a, a robotic arm. However, in our problem, we cannot use exactly the same method. The reason is that these robots were moving on a specific direction with a constant speed. But you cannot really expect a human to walk exactly on the same path with a constant speed. So let me tell you what will happen if we make this assumption. So here, there's a human wearing the headset moving in the environment. If we assume it's moving on a line on a constant speed, this is going to be our estimate of the antenna locations. And if I use this estimation, this is going to be my synthetic aperture radar results. Again, yellow means high probability, blue means low probability of the tag being there. You can see that now we failed to locate the RFID tag in the environment. This is because small errors in locating antennas in the environment can cause completely different synthetic aperture results. So how can we accurately locate tags in the environment while a human is naturally moving in the environment? Remember, so uh, we, our idea is to exploit the cameras and other sensors on the headset to track it in the environment. Remember, we specifically designed the antenna in order not to hide any of its cameras and other sensors. Now, using these cameras, we can create a virtual 3D map using the camera on the AR headset. So as the person wearing the headset moves in the environment, we are able to track the headset and track the human in the environment using the visual and natural odometry of the headset. So the person wearing the headset moves in the environment the headset takes measurements, the person keeps moving, and we try to locate the tag, and you can see the possible target location keeps shrinking as the person moves in the environment. After enough number of measurements and enough walking in the environment, we become confident about where the target location is, and we can locate the target item. There is one small problem that I did not talk about. So this is the headset. And we are locating the headset in the environment using the sensor. And this is the, the uh, coordinate origin of the headset. But in order for SAR, we need to locate the antenna. And the antenna is actually in a different location, has its own coordinate system. So we measure this transformation and then use, uh, use this transformation and position in order to uh, estimate the antenna location in the environment and use it in the SAR to locate the antenna. So great, we locate the tag. We visualize it using a hologram to the user. The user goes and tries to grab it. But then, how can we verify if the person 
uh, picked up the correct item. Imagine in a retail store, there might be very similar uh, shirts with different sizes. How can we make sure the right order is packed for our customers? You might be thinking about several, uh, pro um, several solutions, for example, using computer vision. However, we cannot distinguish between similar objects, for example, different sizes of shirt, using computer vision. It's hard. You might be thinking, why don't we use synthetic aperture radar again? The thing is that previously, we were locating an RFID tag, and the headset had self-tracking on it moving in the environment. Now we don't have a self-tracking on the RFID tag and the tag is moving in the environment. So we cannot use exactly the same method. So how can we verify? Our idea is to use the AR headset hand tracking to create a reverse star with the RFID tag. By reverse star, I mean that now we are moving the RFID tag in the environment to locate the antenna on the headset. Let me sh show you what I mean by this. So here is the uh, user of the headset grabbing an RFID tag item in the environment, which is the target. As she's moving the RFID tag and the item, we take uh, measurements from the RFID using the headset. If you look at it, this is the RFID tag trajectory in the environment. And the interesting part is that if I use the headset hand tracking, this is going to be the hand tracking, a hand trajectory of the user. And I, re I remind you that from the headset inertial and visual odometry, we, ha we know exactly where the headset location is. Now, if I approximate the RFID trajectory with my hand trajectory, I can create the reverse star in order to locate the antenna. This is going to be the reverse star estimate of where the antenna is. And then you can see there's a very small error. We can tell the user, great, you grabbed the right object. Now let me show you what will happen if the user grabs the wrong object. So the user grabs another object. The RFID tag is stationary, but this is the user's palm trajectory using the hand tracking capability of the headset. Now if I, again, approximate the RFID trajectory with the hand trajectory while the RFID is stationary. This is going to be the synthetic reverse SAR result. Again, here is going to be the estimate of the reverse SAR about where the antenna is. And you can see there is a large error to the headset location. And now we can tell the user, you did not grab the right object. Go back. So using this technology, we can verify that the user uh, grabs the right item and then tell them by visualizing a hologram stating so to them. So now let me tell you how we implemented the system. So we have the HoloLens and then we design our own wideband antenna which is on a flexible capstone substrate has less than uh, a millimeter, it's actually 0.1 millimeter thickness and it, ha it has 200 megahertz of bandwidth. This antenna is then connected to Blade RF software-defined radios, which are controlled by a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi sends its information uh, to the H server, which also receives HoloLens information, calculates SAR and the reverse SAR, and sends command to the HoloLens. HoloLens, we de deployed our own app on the HoloLens, and it performs self-tracking, hand-tracking, and visualization. So let me tell you how accurate XAR is in locating RFID tags. So we have a stack of boxes or a shelf, and the user is trying to find an RFID tag item hidden in the environment. On the x-axis, you can see the localization error. And this, on the y-axis, you can see the CDF. And this is how the error looks like in the environment. You can see the median accuracy is less than 10 centimeter. This is enough to locate an RFID tag inside the correct bin or the correct box in a warehouse. So, you might also be thinking, how much does the user need to walk in the environment? So on the x-axis, you see the aperture, which is the amount of distance the user needs to walk in the environment and cover with their walking. On the y-axis, you see the localization error. Here, the pink uh, shows the median accuracy of the system, and the dotted line shows the 90th percentile of the localization. And you can see around 1.2 meter, both up to 1.2 meter, they both decrease, and they plateaus afterward. So 1.2 meters of trajectory is enough to locate an RFID tag in the environment. Now let me tell you about the, uh, how we can accurately, how accurately we can verify if the target object is in the user's hand. So 
For example, when the target RFID is in your head and it's in the line of sight, we can verify it with 98% precision and 100% recall. Now, the interesting result is that if this RFID tag is inside another box and you're moving this box without even being able to see the item or the RFID tag, we can still verify it's in your hand with 100% precision and 85% recall. So, I talked about XAR, which is the first augmented reality headset to bridge network wireless sensing with augmented reality for sensing and localization. This in, I introduced techniques for AR conformal wideband antenna, an AR-based synthetic aperture radar, and an in-hand verification technique. This, this headset and this system opens up new application in manufacturing, retails, warehousing, and a smart home. You can also check our website for more information. And with this, I want to thank you for listening to my talk, and I'm happy to answer any questions.